from another edition of Headbanging is UDK's Big Weather Report auction. Yes, we've had snow here. Oh. Wow, well, looks like Mr. PG's happy about it. I'm not. Let's see the UK's uh, dash cam as he delivers the mail. Very nice of him. And Cloudy Storm, my mother, had the same idea. He's sending out some VCLT. So you'll see Cloudy come in from the left. But Cloudy was in a bit of a rush, I think. There's Cloudy in the black truck. I think. No, there's Cloudy. So he didn't like that cutoff. Here's Greg the A going for a bike ride to get some fresh air. Oh. After that bike accident, Greg the Egg pouts and he figures he needs a coffee, so he go gra he goes to grab one. There he is. Welcome another head. Or I've uh <laughs> A spinning with Greg the Egg, Black My Rules here. Kind of a bit of power punk up pop out roll out. I started off some Californian uh, Blink 182, Offspring, Green Day, some 41. But at first I thought these guys were a UK band because the cover. And there was enough uh, rough around the edges on it to make me think it was, but... Try another one. Well, basically the whole album's like that, so... I want to show a lot today, so... Right after Christmas. Great job Here's on the, the story, you know. I was just wondering sort of behind the scenes, anytime a story like this. Yeah, I don't I've never heard of them before or since or if they have other albums out, I don't know. But, like this. but here's the big one of the show today. By request put it out there. Um you know that that was one of the more striking things about it was that um, I was asked what my thoughts on this album were. The papers, right? I hadn't heard the album before, so. But I had heard the Lumberjack song a few times. And this is better than I thought it would be. Some of the lyrics I really don't like, but that's just me. <laughs> They're kind of along the lines of Firehouse. I haven't heard this for a few days now, so like. But. Totally legit start to the album, though. I'll just... That Lumberjack song, I thought, yeah, I think I remember that with the chainsaw in it, and I heard a couple of... about a minute or two of it, and I thought, oh, I, I can't listen to this. <laughs> it's a neat novelty song, but... But yeah, if the words were just not... Uh, Along the lines of what they are, I'd like it a lot better, but. But you know, that kind of guitar sound would be great at a concert. Redneck punk, I don't know what the lyrics are to this, but. Again, I don't know, I don't even know where they're from. I don't know anything about them. This 90, 1992, so. But someone was still doing this kind of rock back then. Because grunge made me just forget about music. <laughs> I get 
give it a thumbs up. Just some of the words. Um, try one more. I can't remember if there was the the token ballad on it. I don't really remember them there being one. The production on it's great. So yeah, it was definitely a good listen. I wonder how much they sold. I wonder. They seem to be like the, even at the sea level for stuff, for sales, at least where I've always been. I'm, I never see them. But anyway, Soldier 777, Tim Line. Don't know if you know about this album. I think you do. I can't remember. You might have shown it. But the Daniel Band's bass player singer put out an album. Dan McCabe, I think his name was. This a pretty darn good album. Like, I hadn't heard it for a few years, and I thought, oh, is it going to be keyboard laced? Or little, it's pretty well exactly like after leaving off of uh, Run From The Darkness, like that era, the last couple albums of Daniel Band era. Nothing wrong with that riff. Always loved his voice too, just really good layman's voice, a singing voice though, not a rough. I don't know if you can read the credits, I wonder if he says, probably too many to, for me to look at right now, but. But good Christian rock. Next. Well, this song has lots of that, uh, what do you call that? That's what Zach Wild does all the time. I, I can handle it a little bit, but not, not lots. This is a good summertime rocking album to have the top down or the sunroof open. And Never seen this in the wild ever. Produced by Dan McCabe. <laughs> I wonder what year this is. Oh, 91. Well, there you go. That's a real Daniel Band sound there. Oh, I wish I could play guitar to play stuff like that. Might be a slower one coming up. Don't know if it's this one or the next one. Well, let's go to track seven or something here. Love that name for an album. song all it has to have is that chunky rhythm to me and I, I like it <laughs> like pretty well well anyway there's a taste of it all these things um that that hockey culture did to raise awareness about it oh, oh how much time are we looking at okay good yeah for sure we lost him at the now, age of 45 a... one more and then we gotta let you go because i think there's like a cloudy milder issue, but... Uh, one he might like, I don't know. What happens when you mix show. doom metal with Black Sabbath? Like, this is a tribute album. <laughs> the doom in us all. But it's got a, quite the hit list of people. I haven't heard this for a few days either. But it is uh, all respectful versions. Look at that lot, Chris Jericho, who I saw with uh, his band opening up for Saxon. Let's get to the, hopefully that's, you can focus in on, like the guy from Trouble, guitarist from Trouble's in this album. Uh, they thank Michael Sweet on here too of Striper. I don't know what he does or. Well, let's move on to the next one.
there's a waste of space to me. Like, should have pictures of the guys who are involved in the project or something. I don't know, just a blur or creepy thing like that. I'm actually filming this on Halloween though. <laughs> And it was pouring snow a few minutes ago. It's just at the freezing mark, but it's just turned to rain now. See, there is... Let's get to the fast part. Or the... Where it picks up. There we go. Sound quality is excellent, really clear. It's weird the singer for Living Color is singing this, and I saw Living Color backing up Aerosmith, and I hated every one of their songs except their last song they did a cover of something, some song that I quite liked. I was shocked they played, but. Uh... See, there's another waste. I don't know, but. How many songs are on here? Just six songs. The War Pigs is good, Into the Void, Lord of this World, Electric Funeral I never really liked. When Sabbath did it. But it has some good moments. Embryo, I think that's that goofy instrumental, yeah. But that kicks into Children of the Grave. But anyway, you get a taste of that and then, uh, Oh, I wish I had more time for this one. This deserves a whole 15 minutes, but uh, you could only get this when you bought the VHS concert tape. You'd get the CD with it. CD and video double pack. This thing's phenomenal. Black Sabbath Live from the Hammersmith in uh, 1994 with Tony Martin. Song quality on this is fantastic. The guitaring's excellent. Singing's excellent. Like as much as I love Dio with Rainbow and Sabbath and stuff, I didn't really care for when he did the Aussie stuff, but Tony Martin pulls it off nicely, I find, but. There's a couple of newer songs on here, like around this era. Time Machine, uh, Psychophobia, Cross of Thorns, they're all really good. They blend in perfectly. video of this show is on YouTube, I believe. Uh, just typed in 94. Cross Purposes Live. There's a studio I'm called Pro Cross Purposes, and I wouldn't doubt if one of those three songs uh, from that album or on this album. But they play Symptom of the Universe. like. Arguably the greatest heavy metal song of, in history, period. Headless Cross, they do a good version of that. Yeah, Bobby Rondinelli, who played with Rain on drums. He played with Rainbow 10 years before this. So Annie's played with Blue Oyster Cult. Then, anyway, this one of my favorite all-time Sabbath albums for sure. Um, but anyway, I guess that does it. So thanks for watching. No Chris Lord Robic. Keep looking right, right, Cody! Carson, Prince of Denmark, Olsen. Like your flying V. Mmm!